Coming up next on This Week in Torrance, a local elementary school holds a candlelight vigil in honor of the victims at Sandy Hook Elementary. And the Torrance Police Department shares with us what precautionary measures they're taking to better protect children on our school campuses. And with Christmas just days away, find out how volunteers are bringing holiday cheer to those who least expect it. Then the Torrance Fire Department graduates four new members. We'll introduce you to them and tell you about the rigorous training they have to endure. These stories and much more are just seconds away. Your local news starts right now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to This Week in Torrance. I'm Jin Chun. And I'm Ben McCain. Thanks for joining us. Here are your top stories. Tears and disbelief as communities across the country gather to honor the victims at Sandy Hook Elementary School. Here in Torrance at Ellison Elementary, mourners joined hands in solidarity at a candlelight vigil to say a prayer for the 20 young children and six staff members whose lives were taken too soon. A candle was lit for each child while the victims' names were read out loud. This outpouring of support was felt throughout Southern California as this was just one of many memorials held. Those that would like to contribute in any way can do so by going online to newtownmemorialfund.org. While the tragedies took place across the country, local law enforcement and school district officials are addressing safety measures in force here in Torrance, hoping to put parents at ease. Reporter Kyle Sexton was at the Torrance Police Department and has more. Thanks, Jen. Well, even though what happened in Connecticut was about 3,000 miles away from Torrance, people here still want to be assured that their kids are safe in schools. So I'm here with Sergeant Robert Watt of the Torrance Police Department, and he's here to tell us how they work with the school district on how to uh, take all the necessary precautions. So what are some of the things that you are doing working with the schools? Well, the Torrance Police Department has a very good working relationship with both the Torrance Unified School District as well as the many private schools within our city. We offer a school resource officer program as well as juvenile diversion uh, program uh, counseling service as well. And so um, what are some of the, can you describe these uh, programs and how they help the schools? Well, school resource officers, or SRO for short, is sworn officers uh, employed by the city of Torrance or Torrance police officers, and they're assigned to, to work the schools. They each, there's four of them. They each have a, a office in a high school, respective high school, and they handle potential problems, uh, crime prevention, uh, speaking engagements to both school, uh, faculty and students if needed. So what are some of the things that they talk about with the students and the uh, staff? Well, with, with the students, it's, it's more um, identifiers. Um, if, if there's a problem maybe with a student or a potential problem, um, an officer who hopefully has a very good relationship with the students at those schools will, will speak with them and see if it, it rises to the criteria of maybe having them talk to a juvenile diversion counselor. We have three diversion counselors here in the city working for the police department and then they'll see them. Uh, Diversion has over 1,600 students that they see a year. Um, their, their program is very successful with awesome results. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank we you. appreciate it. Well, thankfully, a crime to this extent has never actually happened in the Torrance schools. From the Torrance Police Department, I'm Kyle Sexton, City Cable 3, Jin, back to you. Thanks, Kyle. Well, the Torrance Unified School District also took immediate action following the Sandy Hook Elementary shooting. Let's go to reporter Lorena Salcedo for that story. Thanks, Jen. I'm here at the Torrance Unified School District with Public Information Officer Tammy Kahn. She's going to be giving us some information on the protocol for these types of emergencies. Tammy, how do sites prepare for these types of emergencies? Each school in the district has a safety and emergency plan, which is a guideline on how to deal with an emergency, whether it's a nat uh, natural disaster or an external threat. Can you tell me what the district's response was to the tragedy that happened at Sandy Hook Elementary? It was extreme sadness and shock. Um, we're still grieving, and the heartbreak that was felt across the nation was felt by us as well. And is this event going to have an effect on how schools will react in the future? Safety and security in a safe learning environment has always been the priority for the district and for the Board of Education. We will continue to work with the uh, Torrance Police Department. We have a very good partnership with them. They provide us with school resource officers uh, as well as training. Um, and we will just continue to, uh, to make sure we provide that secure and safe environment for our students. Great. Thanks, Tammy. 
Schools actually mailed out a letter to parents on Monday and it basically addresses the Sandy Hook tragedy and provides resources for parents when they're speaking to their children about violence. Reporting from the Torrance Unified School District, I'm Lorena Salzado, City Cable 3, back to you, Jen. Thanks, Lorena. Now, if you did not receive a copy of the letter that was mailed out by the school district, be sure to contact the principal at your local school. Torrance City Council members were back at City Hall this week for their weekly meeting. Members of the Torrance Civic Chorale graced the Civic Council with three performances from their recent holiday concert. They said the concert held on Friday, December 14th, was dedicated to the victims of the shooting in Newtown, Connecticut. Following the performance, four city employees were recognized for their years of service. Gregory William Vincent was acknowledged for his 27 years of service with the Torrance Police Department. Willie McClinton Jr. served the Public Works Department for 27 years. And Melita Villarreal dedicated 24 years to the city. And lastly, Tony Gassett is retiring after 21 years with the city. Congratulations to all of you on your retirement. Council will be dark for the next two weeks due to the Christmas and New Year's holiday. The next meeting will be held on Tuesday, January. 8th. Council members also heard from the community at the recent meeting regarding a proposed restaurant here in Torrance. Rock and Brew, a popular restaurant in El Segundo, is considering opening a location here in Torrance near Pacific Coast Highway and Palos Verdes Boulevard at what is currently Oliver's Cafe. Noise issues prompted the Planning Commission back in October to deny the permits the restaurant needed to allow outdoor dining and remodel the layout of the current restaurant in place. Working with neighbors, the restaurant owners proposed reducing the outdoor dining areas by almost 800 square feet, eliminating four of the seven proposed roll-up doors and shortening the operating hours. A noise study was done to ensure music wouldn't bother nearby homes. Council unanimously approved this project. Hailed a political giant and true American hero, many are mourning the loss of the late Senator Daniel Inouye. The most se senior in the U.S. Senate, Inouye died on Monday, December 17th of respiratory complications. The 88-year-old Democrat and the country's first Japanese-American congressman has been in office since Hawaii became a state in 1959. He became Hawaii senator in 1962. On Capitol Hill, he rose to become chairman of the Senate Appropriations Committee, which controls the purse strings for the nation and is widely considered one of the most powerful positions in government. A decorated war hero who lost his arm in battle, in 2000, Inouye was awarded the Medal of Honor for his service in Europe in World War II. He was a champion for veterans and veterans' rights. President Obama ordered flags to be flown at half-staff in honor of the late senator. Torrance's hometown hero is going Hollywood, and famous stars are following right behind. Oscar-winning megastar Angelina Jolie is in final talks with Universal and Walden Media to direct Unbroken, a biopic of Olympian-turned-war hero Louis Zamperini. Based on his best-selling 2010 book Unbroken, a World War II story of survival, resilience, and redemption by Laura Hillbrand. A film will tell a harrowing story of Zamperini's brutal internment in a Japanese prison camp during World War II. Joe Lee was quoted saying, Louis is a true hero and a man of immense humanity, faith, and courage. I am deeply honored to have the chance to tell his inspiring story. Joe Lee will oversee development of a final script, of which the most recent draft was penned by Oscar-nominated Les Miserables screenwriter William Nicholson before going into production on the film sometime next year. Italian-born Zamperini was raised in Torrance and set track records as a Torrance high schooler and later competed in the 1936 Olympic Games in Berlin. He's lived quite a remarkable life, of which we'll get to see a part of it on the big screen. Zamperini turns 96 next month. Can't wait to see that picture. Yeah, and happy birthday to Louis Zamperini. Still ahead, a Santa sighting at the Torrance Airport. We'll take you there. And nearly 100 families got together to have breakfast with St. Nick. We'll tell you all about it after the break. But first, here's the current temperature outside. We're here today to ask people about marriage. For starters, what's the best thing about being married? Who I get to stay married to. <laughs> Family. Togetherness. To me, 
is having a companion. This person. My favorite thing about being married is that I have a partner. Do you think your marriage is good for more than just the two of you? Uh, you mean, does it influence those around us? Yeah, I think. In a positive way? I think so. I would hope that people would see that uh, when we're together that we really have a very true affection for each other. What everybody wants and it, we, we know we're lucky to have it. The energy we give out in our home, I think, spreads out to other people. Your marriage just continues to go on and on and on. Oh, sure, and yep. affect generations after us. I think it really sort of stabilizes your whole community. It's a cornerstone of a society, right? Sounds like a good marriage goes a long way. It touches a lot of people. Want to improve your marriage? For ideas, go to foryourmarriage.org. A message from the Catholic Church. A local business celebrated a big milestone this week. Fruits invited the community to help blow out the candles on its first birthday cake. Fruits, which specializes in all-natural smoothies and wraps, is celebrating its success despite opening its doors during tough economic times. City officials, staff, and customers joined owner Ronald Dupree thank you to for an emotional ribbon-cutting ceremony. And thank you for the, to the city of Torrance for welcoming us. It's my pleasure to be here, and I thank you guys very much. Fruits is located at 21219 Hawthorne Boulevard. The Torrance location is the only store here in California. For more than 20 years, the Salvation Army has teamed up with the city of Torrance to feed families less fortunate. And thanks to the holiday cantry collected in November for the Thanksgiving holiday, 440 families were fed, and this month they hope to feed just as many. The holiday cantry was set up in the main lobby of the West Annex at Torrance City Hall. Torrance residents brought in non-perishable food items, and the Salvation Army organized two pickup days during the holiday this food season. This specifically will be going to all of our clients that come in for social services, and we'll be using it uh, you know, to help them out this holiday season, families that, that might be going without food. The Salvation Army still has upcoming holiday events that you can participate in. To learn more, call them at 310-370-4515. Another organization teaming up with the Salvation Army is the Torrance Kiwanis Club, and they're doing their part to spread holiday cheer. Reporter Charlene Chang has more. This year, Santa traded in his sleigh for 1920s biplane. Tony Gorchenko and the rest of the Torrance Kiwanis Club were on hand to serve cookies and hot drinks to onlookers at the Western Museum of Flight. Kids can come over here, visit with Santa, take their picture in a mini jet, and uh, have a good time. This is just one of the efforts that the Kiwanis Club is putting forth to spread cheer this holiday season. Next Tuesday, we are going to be doing our annual visit to the UCLA Harbor Children's Ward, where we sing Jingle Bells uh, very well, I may add. And we pass out candy canes, we bring Santa with us, and then we go to the store club, which is for uh, mothers who are uh, struggling and trying to get on their feet. One of the Kiwanis Club's major projects every year is their partnership with the Salvation Army's Red Kettle campaign. There's my dollar. You want a copy of that? <laughs> we got uh -huh. it, we got it. This money uh, will stay here in Torrance, and it goes to feed families. It buys food, it buys some clothing, uh, toys for the kids. All of these holiday events serve Kiwanis Club's mission to change the world of one child at a time. You know what? It's the warmest feeling you can ever get. If, nobody, if you haven't been a volunteer and you haven't worked with children, you should try it once. Because once you put a smile on someone's face, especially a small child, you go home and you feel better about everything else that's going on in the world. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Charlene Chang. Thanks, Charlene. The Torrance Kiwanis Club invites the public to visit them at one of their weekly club meetings. They meet on Tuesday at noon at the Sizzler Restaurant on Sepulveda Boulevard between Crenshaw and Madrona Avenue. Families got a special treat recently with an opportunity to meet St. Nick up close and personal. Reporter Kyle Sexton tells us more. One, two, three. <laughs> London Garner loves kids. She works with them regularly by volunteering with the after school program. But her favorite event is the annual Breakfast with Santa. Let me see your craziest dance. Oh, no. <laughs> you want to see mine? <laughs> Garner was the master of ceremonies at the event. She loves to make not only kids, but entire families happy. 
I want to be that person to get them out of their shells and out of their comfort zones and have a good time, especially as a kid. You know, it's an awesome feeling to see your child come up and do a song or just sing and dance, and they're just like, that's my child, like, you got my child to do it. With singing and dancing, Garner led the audience away from the worries of everyday life and encouraged them to let loose. Getting everyone to just clap their hands and just come out of their seats and dance with me in the front. I think that's like the best part. And she keeps up the energy year after year. Oh my goodness. I had a cup of coffee this morning. <laughs> but I don't know, it's just when you want to do something, it's just comes off natural when you're passionate about something it shouldn't be a problem so my energy is it's always there about 100 families came to this city event they began the morning with pancakes bacon and sausage pour on the whipped cream okay put it everywhere <laughs> you're silly children lined up for their chance to see santa in person what are you going to ask santa this year for christmas an ipod I am sitting in Santa's very own chair. He should be here any minute, and the kids are so anxious to see him. Are you guys ready to see Santa? Yeah! The excitement couldn't be contained any longer. <laughs> After every kid got a picture with Santa himself, they were even given a present on their way out. Merry Christmas. And from the fun she brings, Garner knows she will see a lot of the same faces next year. It's just a family tradition. You come one year and then the next thing you know, they come a second year. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Kyle Sexton. Thanks, Kyle. Breakfast with Santa is an annual event hosted by the city. Among the toy drives this holiday season, there is an event that helps a completely different group. Reporter Kyle Sexton tells us more. Yards and yards of paper, boxes full of gifts, this time, these presents are not for the children, but for the senior citizens. Be a Santa to a senior has been part of the South Bay community for the past nine years. Farrah Benedict and Denise Decock have been volunteering since the beginning. What we can do is bring a little bit of, put a little bit of joy in their lives and send somebody over to spend a little bit of time with them because that's obviously what the holidays are about. Every year, Home Instead Senior Care organizes the event where gifts are given to those who have little money or are isolated from family. And for Benedict and Decock, the experience is remarkable. Wow. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, that, that is. I mean, I, I have to tell you, I, almost every year, one of us ends up in tears over just the, the, the graciousness and the gratefulness from, from these seniors who, who weren't expecting anything or weren't expecting a visit from anybody. It's just, it's heartwarming to be able to make a little bit of a difference. Over 450 gifts were donated this season. Benedict and Decock are glad they can be part of something so special. I know last year one of the seniors, um, when the gift was being delivered, the person who was delivering it said, well, aren't you going to open it? Um, and the person's like, no, I just want to set it on the table and look at it for a few days before I open it. After gifts are donated, the real work begins. And we go through a frantic um, processing part where we um, make sure all the gifts have come back. And for those gifts that didn't come back, make sure that those seniors are accounted for as well and are going to get something. And then... Uh, here we are wrapping. So once the gifts are wrapped, then they're ready to be handed off and given to various nursing homes and private homes throughout the city. Thank you. Children, families, and seniors themselves volunteer. I think if we are able to do it, it's nice to share. And that's what we're asked to do, is to take care of those who perhaps don't have what we have, uh, haven't received the blessings that we have. And so we reach out to those that, that are in need and that we can help. Benedict and Decock are in charge of hundreds of volunteers every year. It's a lot of work, but it's worth it. When we're in the middle of it, it takes up, it's so time consuming, it's so much work that um, when you're in the thick of it, it really pays off to, to look at the, how it's going to really affect the people who are going to get the gifts. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Kyle Sexton. Thanks, Kyle. The seniors that receive gifts are nominated by various social service organizations throughout the South Bay. It's graduation day for the Torrance Fire Department's newest recruits. Reporter Charlene Chang has more. 
the four of them are now part of a team that we hold in great regard in the city of Torrance. Each one of you, under the leadership of Chief Rakowski, had just accepted a very heavy task to keep the city safe and secure. The Torrance Fire Department's graduation ceremony was the culmination of years of hard work and physical training for Chris Huerta and his three fellow recruits. Even through all the testing, rejections, the recession, putting ourselves through fire academies, paramedic school, and general education, we never gave up and continued to pursue this dream. To get to this point, the recruits spent 320 hours on the drill grounds with their volunteer recruit instructors, who left them with some words of wisdom. To quote one of the training captains that is no longer with us, Captain John Hill, who I worked with right here on these drill grounds. And one day he stood in front of a group of firefighters to be and said, what kind of firefighter do you really want to be? You look in the mirror and you ask yourself that question, and I guarantee you the answer will give you the guidance to further your career. At the ceremony, the new firefighters were presented with their badges before treating friends and families to a demonstration of their skills. This truly is a dream come true. Uh, I've been trying for many years to become a fireman and it's finally happened and it's, it's great to be with a, such a great organization like the City of Torrance. The new graduates still have nine months of probation to go before they're considered state certified firefighters. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Charlene Chang. Thanks, Charlene. For Fire Academy graduates interested in becoming a firefighter, the Torrance Fire Department recommends their auxiliary program. For more information, visit torrentecagovernor slash TFD. There are a number of volunteers helping out at the local hospitals, but none of them were quite like the one reporter Kyle Sexton met with. Let's take a look. Stay. Good girl. Torrance Memorial Medical Center has been training dogs to visit patients for the past 12 years. Dogs of all shapes and sizes are considered for the program, but Golden Retrievers seem to be the most popular. This is Maddie, she's four years old, and she's just one of the 26 active dogs that are part of the pet visitation program at Torrance Memorial Medical Center. Maddie has been in training for the past three months, and once a month she gets to visit patients in the hospital, and she loves every minute of it. We're in the transitional care unit of the hospital. This is where Maddie makes some of her rounds. She brings so much joy to others, like Amber Delelio, who has been in the hospital with foot surgery. Come here, honey. Aww. I love animals, and I think that's the best therapy anybody could ever do is to have animals come and visit them in the hospital. Even though Maddie is too big to lie on the bed, she loves the attention patients give her. The animals don't care what you look like. They don't care. Right. They're there for you yeah. no matter what kind of mood you're in. Becoming a pet volunteer is no easy task. Before Maddie started her training, all the right elements had to be in place. Besides proof of graduation from obedience school, Maddie had to have the right personality. They have to love both men, women equally. They cannot have any uh, nervousness around one or the other. They have to be very calm. They have to be, as I call it, fingertip controlled for uh, obedience. Like when you tell your dog to sit, the dog must sit. On visitation days, Maddie wakes up, takes a long walk, and after a bath the night before, she's ready to be brushed. Some days I have um, huge chunks of hair that I have to pull off. And this is just the fine, fine fur on top. With her badge and bandana in place, she is ready to go. No matter the condition, Maddie looks forward to bringing her love to the friends she visits. She talks with her whole body. When she stands there, she wiggles, and she's just happy. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Kyle Sexton. Thanks, Kyle. Maddie should be done with her training by next month. To find out more about the pet visitation program, call Torrance Memorial at 310-325-9110. Torrance Memorial recently released figures from their 29th annual holiday festival. 
The hospital raised nearly $2 million towards their $200 million capital campaign to fund construction of the new patient tower. More than 5,000 community members enjoyed the six-day event. Housed under the big white tent, festivities included a display of 32 decorated trees, a fashion show, formal dinner, Santa lunch, and even a holiday shopping boutique. The hospital's new patient tower is under construction and scheduled to be completed by early 2015. After the break, we'll tell you about a special event at the Torrance Historical Society. Plus, if you're wondering what to do with your tree once the Christmas holiday is over, stick around, we've got the answer. But first, here's your five-day forecast. Close. Two direct models. We're this close. This close to making history. This close. Of one team. One team. We are this close. We are this close. This close. This close. This close to changing the world. We are this close to making sure no child suffers a crippling, crippling disease ever again. We are this close to making history. We are this close to ending polio. This close to ending polio. We're this close. This close. This close to ending polio. This close. We are this close to ending polio. All we need is you. All we need is you. All we need is you. Is you. We are this close. This close. If we don't act now, we may lose this chance forever. Help Rotary make history at endpolionow.org. Christmas is still days away, but what to do with the tree once the holiday passes? Well, the Torrance Public Works Department encourages everyone to recycle them. You can do so by removing all tinsel, ornaments, lights, and stands. Cut the tree as needed as it should fit securely in a container. Flocked trees cannot be recycled. They should be placed in a refuse container. Wreaths can also be recycled in the green waste recycling bin. Just be sure to remove all metal and plastic beforehand. The city will provide curbside collection beginning December 26th through January 10th. For more information, call 855-354-5623. Now let's go out to Juan Hernandez with a preview of what's to come on the next Sports Desk. Juan, what do you have for us? Hey there, good to see you again this week. For everybody ready to check out the Sports Desk, this week we've got at least one basketball team that is on fire and a few on the pitch that are looking solid in their preseason tourneys. If you want to find out who, check us out every day at 4 p.m. and 9.30 p.m. right here on City Cable 3. Thanks, Juan. Children gathered around for a special reading of a classic holiday tale. Alexa Sita has this story. As local children waited for the festivities to begin, gift-giving started early at the Torrance Historical Society, with lucky visitors receiving a keepsake from the day. It might be easy to forget why these kids packed the downtown museum, but as bears were admired and clutched, these excited kids soon became excited listeners. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. With a wink of his eye and a twist of his head, former council member Paul Nowatka read the classic Christmas poem. When what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. Written in 1822, twas the night before Christmas still delights children today. No dasher, no dancer. Now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Dunder and Blitzen. And later, everyone caught a glimpse of the man with a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. The perfect ending to a Torrance Christmas tradition. For City Cable 3, I'm Alexa Sita. Thanks, Alexa. This is an annual event hosted by the Torrance Historical Society. Well, that's going to do it for us on This Week in Torrance. I'm Ben McCain. And I'm Jin Chun. If you've missed any portion of our show, you can catch us again at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>